like to call to order the Board of Selectmen's meeting of uh, 12 o'clock August 1st. Uh, first of all, comes up as a discussion session. Um, I put on this uh, update on the Tisbury School Building Committee. This was for last meeting, but if there's anybody here that wants to update further information, we can do that now. If not, I will move on to the second uh, discussion of uh, future school enrollment. Uh, Tristan, you had some things to talk about? Yeah, I asked to have this put on uh, because uh, last year we had 21 uh, un well, I don't know how they all were unanticipated, but uh, it was certainly a larger number than the school uh, or others were aware of. We had 21 students go from the Tisbury School to the high school, uh, which affect uh, more than the previous year, the increase of 21 students, so uh, which increased our uh, assessment by approximately three quarters of a million dollars. So those students, when they go there, obviously most of them, you would hope, would stay for the entire duration. So that money, it's not a one year uh, thing, it's it's an increase, a sizable increase for our town. So several thoughts about it. Um, in talking to school people, uh, I think at least seven of them they had no, they were unaware of, which kind of means, if I got this right, that those people came here in the summer. They do the count for the school in October. Right. So I guess there was some awareness that there was going to be an increase. Um, I haven't been able to really find out what the projected increase or decrease or whatever for this year is, um, but numbers like that are unsustainable for us, uh, our community. Uh, you know, we're already, with whatever we do at the elementary school, uh, faced with sizable uh, spending challenges. <laughs> so what I thought about was, uh, trying to talk to the regional school body. Uh, I mentioned this to Colleen McAndrews, uh, who said that they would be discussing the regional formula, which is, you know, in my, well, maybe some of you don't know, but it used to be a good working regional formula that got screwed up about 12 years ago, which has also cost our town, I believe, uh, more money uh, than uh, was reasonable or fair, but I won't go into that long story. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe there should either be looking at the regional agreement on how we deal with large increases of population in any given year um, to the regional body, and that could be involve some other town as well. Maybe they would go through the same thing. Um, so that could be approached either through some kind of circuit breaker, uh, you know, any, I'm just randomly, any school that, <coughs> or increase from a community of five or more students, then that balance should be ameliorated by the rest of the regional school body. That would be one, one or maybe over an average of over five years, you know, uh, that a certain number above that uh, could be, uh, again, taken care of by the regional, the rest of the, our regional partners. Um, I suspect that Tisbury and Oak Bluffs are going to take the brunt, at least in the short term, of increases like this uh, for a variety of reasons. And as much as our housing is not affordable, uh, we are probably the most affordable town on the island. And I think that um, that impacts us. So my long soliloquy <laughs> is basically to say that I would like the selectmen's blessings uh, to contact the regional school uh, committee and our local representative and ask that they look at some way to mitigate large increases in any given year by a community to the regional uh, high school, to the high school. 
to the high, not to, you're, you're talking about the high school. Yes. The 21 students you mentioned are for the high school. Correct. Okay. Because you did mention, I thought you mentioned the elementary school. Well, they come, they were, but you they don't come know. from Tisbury. Right. All right. Okay. So it's, it they could be, coming now from it could be people who never went to the elementary school and moved here during the summer. I mean, that's a possibility. Uh, Is that a motion? Well, uh, yeah, if you want to discuss it for either way, yes. But yeah, I'd like to have a motion that we approach the regional, uh, you know, the regional school committee to uh, discuss, you know, to ask them to either have a circuit break or some way to ameliorate large increases in students from any given community on the on the island. Are you going to go to that? I'll be glad to, okay. to carry the message. Uh, that's a motion? Yeah. I'll second that. Anybody in the audience want to comment on that? Ben? Uh, to be clear, this is, the, they're coming into that school year that we weren't anticipating. They're operating in the school based on that budget that was already set. Right? It should be. So the school is... The budget is set, I think, after October, after the count, after they get that count, that's where they, then they set the budget for the following year. Yeah, the work. would be good to understand how much of an increase in the budget here, 21 new students. It's about three quarters of a million dollars. Right, I understand that, but that's based on their formula, not on the actual, like, what is the cost? Okay, that, the that, good and point. Once you knew that actual cost, maybe that's how you can set up that. Well, that's why I'm asking them to have that discussion, and, well, and that's a good point. I think they're working on the budget now. But if a student moves into the school district after the budget is set, then you're in the school, they're being taught at that previous year's budget, and they have to be Right. Um, we used to so have what a... What is the actual increase if a student comes into they, the school? Maybe they have a contingency for an additional couple of three students. I think they did try to help out some. But this is, you know, 750000 or whatever it is for our community. <clears throat> I'm hoping that doesn't happen next year. But, you know, uh, first of all, as I said, that 750 most of that will stay with us as those students go through. The other thing, which I, call, I talked to Colleen McAndrews, and she said that they, I think if I understood her, they were going to revisit it again. I didn't want to go into a long soliloquy. But we had a regional agreement. 12 years ago that worked really well among the communities. And um, the state, in very simplistic story here, came down and said, you're not doing it the way we want you to do it, and calculating, and don't, the, the calculations, I mean, I'm literally, you need to go to MIT to understand the calculations, because their own people didn't back then. Um, but the way that, that it, they wanted us to change to what they called the statutory formula, but they said, if no community pulls the trigger, then we'll leave things the way they are. And it was a good regional agreement. At that time, if the trigger was pulled, it was going to cost, save Oak Bluffs, for example, a substantial amount of money, but was going to cost us a lot of money. And uh, we also, there was a whole issue of 02568 zip code being involved, and, you know, that where we get screwed because West Tisbury and Oak Bluffs have people in 02568. I mean, it went on and on. It was very complicated. Make a long story short, it was irresistible to Oak Bluffs, and they pulled the trigger. And again, we've spent just on that alone also uh, over the years. It was supposed to be a five-year transition. We're in our 12th year, and that's also cost us three, but that's over three quarters of a million dollars or more since that has cost an additional Tisbury in a regional agreement that was working well at the time. Anyway, Colleen McAndrews did say to me that she thought they were going to take a look at the regional agreement this year, which uh, I think would be a good idea as well. But uh, it, that's a very complicated, how you know, the whole thing of how they calculate per student. I, you know, literally, it's like an MIT guy, a guy, guy's got to <laughs> understand that. So uh, can you repeat your motion? My motion is that we ask the regional school committee to look at setting up some kind of uh, circuit breaker or method to ameliorate uh, yep. uh, large increases from any one school within the regional school district on a, okay. a, a, on a yearly basis. I don't know. Well, you probably had wrote down the first thing I wrote, which I think was better. I will second that again. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So you are going to be our representative to do that? Well, I'll carry the message. Hopefully our school group will. Okay. Uh, you're going to contact Colleen? Uh, get yeah, and message. I don't know who's the chairman. I think, I don't know if she's chairman, but whoever's chair yeah. of our local group, I will. Okay. All in favor? Oh, oh, Jeff. Excuse me. Jeffrey. So last week we had a joint meeting. Um, we got that we are meeting the online finance committee's meeting. It's going to be on the 
That would be a good time maybe for Tristan to come. I think, but yeah, yeah I'd love to have. go, although I think what I'm asking, I would ask whether they, whatever formula they were using, because um, this is a large, in, you know, 21 new students had an enormous the impact. That I think you've all heard about over the last year yeah. in Western Massachusetts. It's a different issue. Yeah. Well, isn't that, a, isn't that a formula that would make this, Make, make I'm your, asking, <coughs> maybe, yes, but what I'm asking is different. I'm we, asking... We, but we have that one formula that you don't like. Correct. They have this formula that, don't they want to change? They're going to look at it. Here's the problem with just doing it because of new students coming in is that, you know, we change something, we're going to spend a lot of money on it, and then it's going to come back and bite us in a couple of years. So the way to look at it is what Bill McGrath is proposing is to look at the whole way we pay, like Ben said, long term. We have to look at those nitty gritty things before you can start changing the formula because mm -hmm. you know, we changed it to the statutory formula. Oak Plus got hurt with a few extra students a couple of years ago and we were like, that Oak Plus, and they were the ones who saved money when we had to change the statutory formula. So rather than burning the town here and there every couple of years, let's just look at the formula and see what works. But I think this that irrespective of I, two things, I would like to pursue this because I think that they need to be made aware, meaning the school committee, that there's an issue for our town. And I believe even if you wanted to change the formula to the kind of thing you're talking about, it's, it would take several years to get there. And I still think if there was a year where Oak Bluffs had 20 new students to the high school, irrespective of whatever formula we're living in, there would be an impact. So all I'm asking is that there be some shoulder, unless we're just going to do, which I, I, and again, that this would take time as well. You know, one, one island, one student, you know, no division by towns, you know, uh, which, you know, maybe <laughs> I'll be long gone when we get to that point. But, but uh, you know, I think in the short term, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree with it. But I, I would like to pursue some kind of circuit breaker in the short term for any town that has to go through this. I'm suspecting that Oak Bluffs and Tisbury are probably going to be, <coughs> if there's a potential for this to happen, my guess is it's going to be happening in either Tisbury or Oak Bluffs because of economics. So that's all. And I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think... All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, I'm going to skip down to administrative session. Um, signing of memorandum of understanding for the integrated design path for small buildings, Tisbury School Building Committee. And I think, Amy, is this, is this what we have to sign? Why don't you come up here and... <clears throat> Yeah, Jeff, Jeff can do that. <laughs> can, so, you, can you tell us what this yeah, is? Yeah, so these documents are uh, documents that uh, Colleen asked me to bring in. And um, it's a, mem a memorandum of understanding for the integrated design path for small buildings. And um, essentially, uh, I don't know if you want me to read some of this, but that would be helpful. Well, give us this. Uh, but 50 basically, cent it'll, it, it's all part of helping to ensure that we get the incentives for um, energy efficiency. Yeah, so, that's what I read. Um, and it, it it's part of as they as they go through the schematic design that they can, if we are implement this change, these energies, then all of the um, environment or the uh, the. Uh, savings that we can get through energy savings can be incorporated as they design the, the scheme. Has all the building committees seen this? I don't know. Do, the they, need, to do they need to see this? I don't believe that they do. It's essentially the town that has to sign off on it and it's to, um, that's a good question. I can, I mean, I can ask Colleen real quick. Well, I kind of read it as, uh, quickly 
And my understanding, because I, when I heard about, oh, God, we got to sign something for the school, here we go again. And um, when I read it, it has to do with when they're building stuff, this is a very simplistic version of it, I'm sure if somebody like Ben read it, he would get much more detail out of it, but that we would be able to either apply or get uh, reimbursements or credits for energy savings vis-a-vis -vis whatever it is we're doing. It didn't lock us into... It did talk about new construction, but but it didn't lock. I mean, it didn't change anything. So if, yeah, or, the, the, the more we the more we did look like a positive. We look like a positive in that yeah. if this is where we're going down, we would get either credits or but or credits. This for, doesn't make us do anything specific. No. It just says if you do certain things, you can get reimbursements yeah, and get credits for that, that down the road. Correct. And so what it, so the integrated, it's integrated design path for small buildings and the purpose is to produce, is to reduce building electrical and thermal energy demand and consumption by in, implementing cost effective design alternatives early before the end of the design yeah. development. So the whole, per, why it's coming before you today is because we want to get that in as they're doing the design components of it. Um, is there a, de de a de deadline that we have to meet? That's why we're signing it quickly? I thought there was there was a end of the week, but if you don't let me, know, let me see if I. Um, I think so. I think that's why we're meeting. Yeah, remember. yeah. I think it had to be signed by the end of this week. I think week. that it actually. So this is date a letter dated July twenty seventh. Is that the one you have? Mm -hmm. And um, so yes. Okay. So. so I'll make a motion that we sign this. I'll second. Uh, questions, comments. Who, who is issuing the credits? Through well, they the didn't. Mass save. Is this is, is this separate than the MSBA green green uh, reimbursement? Yes, it looks like it's different stuff, and it looks like it's not that we're getting. It looks like we have the potential for reimbursement. I didn't really, you know. Is there a monetary value that's been? I didn't see any. I, I just scanned either. it quickly, but I didn't no. see any. My question is: Is what are we actually? Signing on to. I mean, we're signing on to that if we, we if we if we're building when we're doing the building if we do certain energy things that we will either if I remember reading it either we will get credits or money toward doing those things from this group or yeah. whatever they call mass but it doesn't obligate it doesn't say they're going to or I mean in other words I guess this allows that to happen um, we would have to apply. But if there's no later. I mean, it doesn't spell out anything beyond it says when you're building. You know, yeah. new. It mentions new. I think it mentions new construction in there. Yeah. We, would, we would have it. to apply for this. To I'm get sure. Any credit I would guess it would so apply to rather than not do well. it and not get any credit by signing this. We're not telling them we're going to do it. We're just saying if we do do it, we're ready and eligible to get credits. Right. And so, if it, and and you just have to do it before as the project is. Uh, getting up and operational and giving them information that you're intending to um, try to get some of these credits and work with them, um, and they'll give you some feedback on the design to help. Yeah, no, I mean, I understand like the process. They want you to start as early as possible so that you can actually get to it. And that's what we're doing now is, I guess, the building committee is getting ready to start to design this thing. Kate? Um, so. What, um, if there's a deadline for the end of this week to sign this thing, what does that deadline relate to? What is it in relationship to? I think it means that our eligibility for this um, would, I, I, we probably well, could lose. This week of Don't know. Don't know. I think that, that it's all to? part of, um, and I apologize, Colleen was supposed to be here and had to go off island unexpectedly, so she's sort of the the expert in all of this, but um, my understanding is that this all go. This is all part of the process with the MSBA, and so if we can have, and the next step for the MSBA is in the um, the mid-August time frame, and it has to do with the architects being able to submit certain documents. Is is my understanding? I can check it's with Paul into the MSBA process. Mm -hmm. I believe that it is, yes. Mm -hmm. Does it relate only to new construction or does it relate to No, no, I thought I read in the thing new. New, new construction. I think it said new in the document. But so I don't know if that would apply to renovation. I don't know. But this it's, says new. It's for, it's, this particular one that we're looking for is related 
to new construction, and it's for buildings between 20,000 and 100,000 square feet specifically. I think the time sense of pieces is that the architects want to proceed with the design. Yeah, we'd like to get them started too. Use this process yeah. when they're looking at it because, I mean, as this says, building designs proceed at the direction of customers and their design teams. There is no statutory right. deadline set by MassSave. No, I think it's all tied in. It's exactly all tied into the design process. process. Dana? The line comes from the architects. Yeah. Um, I get exactly what this piece of paper is for you. <laughs> uh, the question comes up is why isn't someone here before us to tell us how much more it's going to cost? to go for these, these saving measures and how much we're going to get a credit for and how mm -hmm. much more is that going to add to or not add to the bill. Well, I think, that that could, I think that could come later. This is just a paper that says we're going to well, attempt to do these. If we don't do them, we're, so what? But, but as this young lady is saying, um, they, the architects want to be able to start designing that into the process. So at what point are we going to get information about how much And what are our cost savings? So if they're spending fifty million dollars, it is just going to add uh, another million dollars. And do we get a tax credit of two hundred fifty thousand dollars? So it's not worth it. That's the kind of question. Right? So I think that again, I, I I think those are good questions. Mm -hmm. And I think my understanding in reading this, and I'm not, mm -hmm. is that this doesn't obligate us to anything as a community. So if so I think that those questions you ask, we should have Colleen or somebody come in and answer for us. Yeah. Um, I'm so, actually chatting with you. Okay, because I don't think this, I mean, again, I, 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 when I first saw this, it's like, oh, great, we're going to have a meeting, a controversial meeting to sign something, you know. And I, my reading of this is it just allows us, if we want to, to move forward on this energy on the energy end but I don't I, did, I don't see us locking us into no. now obviously if we do this I guess the architects probably gonna design some things in and that's where mm -hmm. I think your questions so I mean I think we should ask those questions and have ask if maybe at our next meeting they could uh, give us those answers as to what it is uh, I think I think that that would absolutely be fine it has to be submitted and part of the as part of the follow-up there were meetings this uh, last week up in um, Boston with MSBA reviewing the preliminary design, and they had some questions and comments, and um, and I think that this was a result of, of that to look at some of the cost savings that we could we could um, recoup as a result of some of the the design. So in terms of um, exponential change in in the in the price of the building going forward, I, I certainly don't envision that it's going to cost, that it's going to make a huge difference in the in the range of costs that we already um, have. But, you know, I, I don't have enough specifics about what this what this will entail. There's um, no cost. I mean, the, the construction yeah. cost, there's no construction cost. This right. is only it's an for ability to yeah. get a lower energy rate. Right. right. That's it's, it, provider. It, it will save the town money right. in, in the, um, how they how they buy and access the energy that is used. I mean, and my understanding again. I, I mean, I think uh, there are two pieces. Number one, I, I would like her, them to come in. Maybe they could give us. I think Dana's questions are good. If somebody could, you know, in the next month, come in and sure and answer possible. us. Number one and number two. I mean, in the end, we're all going to be voting on this at the ballot. So I would assume that this should be explained as. Ask that question at the next I meeting with the architect. You know? Yes, um, these energy efficient buildings, normally it's people with an NEE operation, and then it's not too late even after the building is completed and inspected, and then they can get the credit, and then they can actually get the money reimbursed. And the MSBA, when you take this building, they're not the architectural professional necessarily, and the, I don't know whether one of those they put it down and then this extra saving is actually helping the rest of the money, 59%. And it's not the, I don't think it's not the right timing at the moment, because of the building mass, mass, uh, massing position on the using side of the GU or using and the audition, doesn't address any of this, uh, how this building design, the way it's laid out, is going to actually save the energy and all that. And uh, it's too early. 
as a designer, and it should be only uh, disclosed once the design gets developed into the schematic design, then once we get to know the what's the planning material, what's one of the depth of the beach space, and the ventilation, and the uh, HVAC, the capacity, and all that, only then you know that. So this, this does not yes, have to do with design. This does not, design. but this does not have to do with design. But it doesn't have to be rushed. Well, if we're only telling it, we're only saying, if I read this right, we're only saying that we will do our best effort, probably our best effort, to to do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it and it really is a cost savings to the town in the in the energy that's provided. Um, Jay Grandy and um, uh, Mr. Mattel. Kirk, 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 right there. Hi. So, can you can you get to see any more of this? No, I just want to. I don't think he's seen this yet, but ben. there is also a design services incentive in this. So the architects potentially get paid more if we enter in this program, and that's an incentive they give to the architects to to design a more efficient building. So when it comes to the design layout, that you can ask those questions whether we need that. That uh, well, we're allowing them to go forward with the program. So they get. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, well, so they have to. Potentially, we're paying. We're going to pay more up front. This is only saying that we uh, makes us eligible. It's not saying that we'll do anything. We can decide we don't want to participate in the program at any point going forward. I think at this point, um, what we would like is, is the ability to participate. But in the, the town says it's okay to. If we decide, we as a town, based on some of the questions that folks have, the town decides they yeah. don't want to participate, then we can we can decide not to participate. But given the timing of when this needs to be in for the for the uh, construction, it would be really helpful and greatly appreciated if we could sign it now, sure. so that at least if we decided we wanted to be eligible, we could be. Okay. Um, have we had the town council read this so we know exactly? Town council doesn't have to read this. Well, I'm just wondering about the point that Ben is. Speaking. You're going to raise. You're going to raise the cost of town council's fees <laughs> at reading this. And um, I just would like to <coughs> get onto the record um, that the most green uh, cost-saving thing that the town can possibly do is not demolish the still of the building. That is the least green thing. Demolishing the building. Thank you for your comments. Ready to vote? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Um, irrespective of, you know, I don't know if I'm, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, the school committee voted 11 to 5 for whatever reason. I, I'm not sure I'm totally on board with this. Uh, but if, if that's the direction the town is going in, and it appears to be the direction the town is going in, um, then I, I don't see any detriment to signing this letter. Uh, it doesn't obligate us to anything, and if we end up approving a new school, then if we have the numbers that uh, look like it's beneficial, we have the option of, of doing that. Uh, but I, I also, I agree, I'd like to have those numbers. I think that's a good question Dane asked, and I'd like to just to, I think it's... Colleen said she'd be happy to ask uh, Peter to come. Yeah. Or uh, Richard Marks, I'm sure, could, could come. And, and, uh, and she's just asking when the next date would be to see if they're available. June 2018. <laughs> we, are so, we are so swamped. So, uh, well, I, we'll have to get that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can work that through Alex. So. Thanks. All uh, ready? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, how about uh, reading payroll? We have a payroll number 0727-2017 for $134,111.50. Um, I'll make a motion. So move, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, last but not least, um, any public comment? Mr. Schilling. Well, I don't know if this is public comment or department report so uh, I'll give it to you either we way. could do both <laughs> excellent a couple of weeks ago I brought an issue to your attention relative to parking on Daggett oh and yes I was just there today and it's horrible it is horrible <coughs> yeah. and uh, I was hopeful to be on the next agenda and, uh, and here's a meeting and it's not on the agenda 
You're right, it is horrible. Well, this was just, this, this meeting was scheduled like that so we can get this paperwork taken care of. Whatever. We will put it on the next one, but should the, the parking next one is when? Next week. Right? August 15. August 15. Can, does the parking committee uh, need to weigh in on this? You, you haven't given us any directions. Down so here. my 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 it thought is, would is, be it is if, really bad down there. I so, drove by today and at uh, at eleven o'clock. Right. And there were people parked on the curve <coughs> and across the street. So right. You, so you, you can't you, make a right angle. I turn. barely got through with my Toyota. Exactly. Yes. And that's a, and that's and that's my concern is the longer we we drag okay, this so out. Okay. So I got an this. idea. I yes. got an idea. So um, hold on, then I'm gonna get through. So I. I what I would, two things. I think that we should schedule a meeting, schedule this on the agenda for the 15th for public discussion and selectmen ultimate decision based on recommendations of all you guys. It'd be number one. Number two, if we, if we feel it's a dire situation right now, it I'm is. not adverse to taking heat for like, Ten days. <laughs> you no, it, it is. It is. <coughs> an or a fire so you so have to go down. Which there side of the road do we want them? Not on. Not on the south side. On the okay. North side so I'll make a motion that we. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't normally do this. I'm gonna be addicted. Like the guy in Venezuela or something, <laughs> for one week. Yeah, that, this, uh, this is why. Uh, this is why we get paid the big uh, bucks. So. so I'll make a motion that we uh, temporarily eliminate parking on the south side. Uh, until our next selectmen's meeting, and that at that time we will discuss permanently making that happen. I second that. Uh, Chief. I'd just like to say, Mr. Israel, that that is part of your job responsibility is public safety, and, and I do appreciate the fact that you you are all about the process and have always been all yeah. about the process. But, but this is a matter of, of, of immediate concern, as you said, uh, you can't can't negotiate that street. No. The amount of people that are now living on that street and parking on that street has, has changed the whole character of that neighborhood. And uh, I, I believe that eventually you're going to end up having to make that street one way. That it's not possible <coughs> right now for two cars to pass on Daggett yeah, Avenue. Can't do it. You can't. You can't possibly do it. Yeah. And so it's know, a checkerboard pattern. People here, right? here, here. And you, you know, your ultimate responsibility is one of public safety, and, and, and that's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. I certainly would be open to hearing what, what the residents have to say and, and what solutions there may be. But you know, there's Can, new construction going on. There's going to be more cars on, on this. Well, yeah, there's a couple houses since that are renovated since, down there. If we're me. dictatorial in this thing, I then I can say that uh, one of our esteemed <laughs> department heads <laughs> said this. I'll put it. I'll have. A, I'll have them all. No, I'm Police teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing you. you Mr. I'm to teasing you. No, I, I am teasing. But no, this is this is a uh, it, it, it's a situation that's developed without you know our awareness over time. You know the number. Yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, what used to be primary homes have now either become seasonal or rental, and it's changed the whole character of that area. Right. So, yeah. but thank you for taking action on that. Uh, Ray. Uh, so speaking to that, so I think we can go ahead and do that first thing tomorrow. I would like you to do it first thing tomorrow, if not this afternoon. However, what we need to do is generate, I think we need to generate a flyer to put on all the cars and all the doors of the owners of uh, uh, those properties so they're well aware of it because they're going to wake up tomorrow and say, where did this sign come from? And we'll take the heat for that, but we should notify them some way, shape, or form. That's my opinion. And we'll have a full house on the 15th, I uh, will guess. Yeah, at least we're not talking about mopeds. So right. I, if that's the case, I just wanted to give you an update. So um, there's been a lot of issues with this crosswalks. I've been asking <coughs> people since May 11th. They're not doing it, so my guys are update today. Wait, wait, hold on. So we need to vote on this first. Oh, no, sure. Because, uh, we're and then we, Dana had a, I can't see him up before. So Dana. So someone brought up the, the taxpayer in town just brought up and something I really never brought to my mind. That's the intersection of Spring and Frank. Yeah, is right it, now, we're just let's deal with Daggett, Daggett, Daggett first. Let's okay. finish that, okay. and then we can do, deal with other do things. Do we have a motion? I, I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Daggett. You're late, Ray. Let the police chief know. <laughs> let the police chief know as well. So that, yeah. that, cause, I'm actually meeting him at one point. Okay. Okay. And then, and then if we could 
So on our agenda, we'll put for, you know put it out as early as we can that we're going to discuss that parking on the 15th. I know we have a full meeting, but we're yep. going to have to throw it in there. Somewhere. I think I think Melinda said that she, they had talked about that on the parking committee. No. Never talked about that. Either. No, not at all. Okay, miss misheard that. Just to clarify, you want it to be a public hearing? You want to not a public hearing. We're going to have a public meeting. It, it's, I mean, it will be, I mean, it's not a formal public hearing, but, you know, we want to hear from the public and get feedback before we make a decision as to permanent. I right. mean, it could be, right. yeah, so, public hearing. Public hearing. This works out perfect, because, again, I would say I've been dealing with highway safety for a little while. We've had a uh, request since it's May 11th do crosswalks, whatever reason, there ain't no all the excuses. Uh, rain, too much rain, state saying the same thing. So we just did today, we were, uh, we're starting side crosswalks today. Tomorrow morning we'll be out at 4 a.m. finishing Main Street, so we can actually run right over there and do that as well. Um, we're probably not gonna do, usually we do our crosswalks in the thermal paint, so that will last yeah. longer. We're just gonna have to wait to get through this winter and then next spring and try to do it right next year. Just get it done. Yeah, it's at that point. It's just, I've actually talked to him three times this week. Can you can you do uh, five corners also? I cannot touch that. I have no right to do that. How about if I do it overnight? The state is supposed to be here this week. Yeah, you said that two weeks ago. No, no, no. That's that was the. I <coughs> right. reach out to them and make sure they're still coming. I think we should secede and do our own stuff. I well, that, that state, would be up to you guys. If you want to let us do it, we'll do it. But I didn't. I didn't get into we government money. Out. In government, uh, uh, to be slow and no, I, I agree. lethargic about stuff. I like to, to see things done important. quickly. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a long line chart with the center lines and fog lines on Sunday night. Okay. And then we're going to see online all the praises for the oh, painting yeah. we get for, for the paint <laughs> work we do. <laughs> and make sure it's it's, it's waterproof paint. <laughs> You're done with you. Did, did he answer your question? Uh, I was going to maybe even direct this to. Uh, we can talk to him offline about that. What, then. what somebody brought up the other day to me is then uh, it makes total sense at the intersection right here, Franklin and uh, in Spring. Uh, when you come up, you can't see the on um, the cars coming down the one way. In uh, I know there's one or two spots there. There. Yeah, and, and it's and really hard. This woman was saying, "Is there any way that we can do something about it? Just bring it up." You're on the parking committee? Parking? You're on the parking yeah, committee? No. So it's those two parking spots at the end. Well, it's like really three of them. Well, that's too many to get rid of. We can't get rid of too many. Let's start, if we do anything, maybe one first and look, look at it. I'll talk to Eric. Yeah, I mean, I'll get Eric to chief. All right. Yeah. yeah. Larry, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Would that be one of those things that we've got this new committee that's supposed to talk about these things? The is parking that a request? The parking committee? No, no, no. This is this new committee, myself, Chief, mm -hmm. Chief, Chief Hanneman, uh, Jay, and uh, Joe Paul. What committee is that? Stop signs, request for crime, yeah. anything like that. Yes. That's Sorry. what that committee is. Absolutely, yeah. Of course, yeah. That Sounds good to me. That's that. different than the parking. That other committee is more globally right. looking at stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You can send the request to me, and I'll speak okay. with the group about getting together. Sounds like a good thing. Are we done with parking and Guillaume? Yes. Um, our town uh, in the certain side street, which doesn't have the sidewalk, and people take uh, the homeowners or tenants to <coughs> change it. All the frontage that touches the town road, they turn it over into the parking spaces. And uh, if it's uh, to have the parallel parking, and uh, if that's not uh, enough, some of them actually start to clean their yacht into the those one that is a uh, Avenue, one parallel to the Skiff Avenue, they leave their yacht permanently on the street. And the street is wide enough to open it, it's so good. has to go through, but they have a huge yard to go park there. Where is this at? Uh, no. And uh, where? So people they don't have any delineation of the public road and the front like, property lines. They public. even have a uh, people who are parking into their lot, they try to leave all their cars so that they don't have to damage their property, the landscape and all that. So we have to include this parking committee and uh, the, the DPW. I think we have to address it and we have to put that in the bylaws about the, even if we don't have a sidewalk, what has to be uh, respected, what's not. Respected. I think there is a bylaw that talks about encumbered 
uh, areas. You can't put anything in the street to block off your driveway, something like that. I, well, we have a bylaw already that says that, so we, what we need to do is enforce that bylaw. Yeah, we, so, well, but I don't think, I, what I, if what I'm hearing right, and I didn't recognize it, if somebody's leaving a, a boat and a trailer parked out on a public road permanently, that's not a, ten, that's not a tenable situation. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that, so if that's the case, <coughs> I think we ought to, well, I guess we should look into what are our options in that kind of case. Maybe you. I don't think I have any overseeing, I don't think probably, so, no zoning. Well, do we have, that's my question, do we have any, maybe we should ask the police, are there any, uh, you know, rules about leaving a trailer, you know, out on a, on a public road for, for a length of time? Yeah, we'll there's find a, out. Uh, I think we should find out. And then... There's um, a by, there's a bylaw that <coughs> updated November 5, 2013. No bail box, barrel, bundle, cask. Merchandise, any commodity, no boards, timber, bricks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that can block, uh, shall be placed or suffered to remain in any street, highway. Basically, we I think we already have one, have that article, but or that bylaw. Those users, who, the car well, I sent this to the chief. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a an issue with one, call the chief, tell them a specific area, and state this bylaw. That's, so we already have one, and if it doesn't match or fit that, then we'll correct the bylaw. So that's what I would do. So, um, so we ready to move? Uh, what is the next thing? So what we had a, 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 we did public comment um, about uh, other business not reasonably anticipated. Uh, is there any further co public comment before I close that? Okay, Tristan. So two things. Number one, I would like just rhetorically either on the 15th or the next meeting depending on how full it is I will bring I would like uh, to follow up with our meeting with the library and I'll maybe prepare a letter or something that you guys can look at uh, just to talk about the things we talked about at that meeting okay uh, with the library commissioners um, second of all uh, okay so I would like to move into executive session um, because this is not anticipated. We need to, um, for reasons of real estate negotiations, um, and just so people know, this is about, and I actually, if Ben and Cheryl wanted to remain, I wouldn't have a problem, and John uh, Snyder, this is about looking at a uh, potential uh, piece of property that potentially might benefit the town. So I, I, and we have to move according to Jonathan, we need to get some answers quick and Jay's not here. So I would make a motion that we go into executive session with respect to real estate negotiations, I guess is the, whatever that language is for that. I'll second, second. that. And if Ben, is Cheryl here still? No, she's No, but maybe Ben, you, you might be good if you Do stay. Do we take the roll call before we vote or after we vote? No, we take the roll call now. Yeah. No. Yes. 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 So, and I have Ben and John uh, Snyder to stay. 